Hello, this is Dennis, and I wanted to talk to you today about electronic Bible study tools that I use uh, in my Bible study. And if you've checked out our other videos on Bible study tools, part one and two, you'll know that um, I, for the first eight to 10 years, I used the book versions of the Strong's Concordance and the Noel Webster's 1828 Dictionary and a Bible. I use those tools. But today I wanted to share with you eSword. That's the electronic Bible study tool that I use uh, to be able to study. I have been using this since 2012 uh, on my iPad. So I wanted to show you that particular type of version of eSword. It, it's just uh, eSword HD. It is on uh, my iPad only. Um, you can also, um, there are uh, an app for your iPhone, which is eSword LT. Uh, there are minimal uh, uh, download uh, costs for those. And then in the future, I'm gonna show you on my Apple laptop, uh, eSword X, which is extreme. And boy, the power searches on, on that is just incredible. Uh, if you have an Android, uh, it uh, does not have the eSword app, uh, but something that is comparable, uh, not the same, is called MySword. Uh, and then if you have a PC, you could download uh, eSword for free. But now let's, let's get into the introduction of this uh, eSword program HD. And I want to show you how I uh, use it uh, on my iPad. Uh, and here it's coming up here. And so I just wanna give a little introduction. The same tools that I used in book form are, it's, it's here in this eSword program. So that's, that's what's all ex really exciting about this. So it has a strong concordance uh, built in, as you can see here, um, uh, here I'm in the book of Mark and it has all the numbers here after the words. And, and those are actually, um, uh, links to the translation of the of the word from the Greek or the Hebrew. So I'm just going to give you uh, uh, an example here. Uh, I'm looking up storm G2978 so that it actually gives you, uh, it means a whirlwind uh, storm tempest and it gives you the number here. Uh, uh, what else does this, it, it actually has uh, built in uh, different types of uh, versions. Um, I have quite a few different ones that uh, you can compare and use. There are some that uh, it actually, uh, there is a minimal cost to. So a lot of the ones that I have are free that I have on my uh, particular system. So you can uh, use, uh, you can compare, and that is, and I just have the King James Version with the Strong's and the King James Version compared to each one of those uh, in a horizontal way. Uh, I only have two different versions, but when you look at parallel, this is powerful. I have the modern King James Version, the American Standard Version, the Contemporary English Version, the Easy Reading Version, and the International Standard Version. So I have all these different versions that I could look at one time in one verse. So I, I have that. And then uh, there are particular ones that uh, the Harmony, uh, and that is that this particular story of Jesus calming the storm is recorded in three gospels. And you could compare each one and what they're, with what they, each one of them had to say. So you could see what Mark, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew had to say, Mark and Luke. Uh, it wasn't recorded in John. So you, you have those three side by side and you can compare those stories and that's under harmony. Um, so that is the, the Bible part of it. Uh, and you know, it has the Old and New Testament, uh, uh, you know. And so uh, let me show you another capability that I really love here uh, on this um, is that uh, when you look up, okay, let me look up the word wind here. So you could, like I said, you could hold it down and it tells you what wind the trans, Relation in the, it gives you the Greek and what it translates uh, in the Greek. But it also, when I hold down wind, it does a search and it will tell you 
uh, that there are 29 verses in the New Testament that have the word wind in it. And it says there are 31 matches. So actually one verse has wind twice. So there's 31 times in the New Testament that the word wind. So you could look up, uh, uh, you know, uh, these various verses to see what it's actually talking about here. So I went to Matthew 11, 7. So I go back to the search. You can look at Matthew 14, 24 and read what it has to say on wind and go on and on. Uh, also, uh, there is the dictionary, and this is the Noah Webster's Dictionary. So I'm going to look up the word wind here, and it gives you the uh, definition uh, of wind. Now, I like this particular uh, uh, dictionary because it actually, uh, that particular year, uh, Noah Webster evidently must have been a Christian because he references um, using uh, scripture. So you can see here uh, under number two, the def definition, the four winds, the cardinal points of the heavens. And then it gives a verse from Ezekiel 37. Come from the four winds, O breath and breath upon these slain. So that's uh, Ezekiel 37. Uh, so it has uh, the Strong's Concordance. It has the Noah Webster's Dictionary. And then it has the commentaries. Oh, this is really good. So uh, let's see. Let me uh, give you, uh, well, let's see. Is there a story here? Jesus heals the sick. Uh, so let me put on that. And then I'm going to do the commentaries here. So this is a commentary uh, by Matthew Henry that he just goes verse to verse. And, uh, you know, these are scholars that explain what these verses mean. So you can look at that, and, and I use Matthew Henry, uh, Albert Barnes, uh, and John Gill. Those are the three that I use, but you can come up with uh, other commentaries. There's Pulpit Commentary is an excellent commentary, too. There are others, that B.W. Johnson, Cambridge. Uh, there are numerous uh, other commentaries that you could use uh, to try to understand what these verses mean. So that's pretty much the introduction. Um, is there anything else on here? Uh, this has other things uh, like uh, a devotional reading uh, from Charles Spurgeon that you, and other uh, devotions. Uh, so this is a morning and evening devotion that you could have. Uh, let's see, it also has uh, history. It, it, you push on this button here above this round circle, and it'll tell you uh, the verses that have, you have used already during this Bible study in history. So you can go back to the, those verses. Um, I think that pretty much, uh, I think I've covered everything in this introduction. All right, this was just a quick overview of um, the capabilities that uh, this eSword uh, HD has. And stay tuned to our next video. We are going to show you how to use eSword in an in-depth Bible study. So check out our other videos and we will continue to learn how to study the Bible together. Thank you.